Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here for another Monday This and That vlog. And for those of you who are new, what this is, is just a weekly vlog I do so that I can give you updates on various things, let you know if videos I already have or videos yet to come, give you announcements on things like book giveaways and collaborations I'm putting together between me and my followers and so much more. Part of the reason I do this is because most of the other videos you see that are published through the week have all been shot anywhere from three to six weeks ahead of time. So this is a way I can keep you more current as to what's happening in the here and now. So let's get to the topics of today and you might have noticed my silly title in the thumbnail. I get a lot of people that come in, some of them have been following me for a while, some of them are new, some of them are just drive-by shooters, but you know, you, I got to approach this and that is the people that complain that I talk too much. Well, first of all, let me just make sure everybody understands. I'm not a fast food joint. I'm not going to take some lousy information and slap it between two stale buns and maybe squirt a little bit of chemical laden ketchup on it and then serve it up to you. If you want that kind of information, then you probably need to go to places like TikTok and so on. That is not why I'm here. I am here to answer all the many questions that I know people are going to have on any given topic. So even if those questions do not pertain to you, like, you know, how many quarts are in a gallon and so on and so forth, because maybe you see that as pretty standard information everybody should know. Well, believe it or not, not everybody understands that. So these are things I have to explain and go through and walk people through step by step. So just look at that extra information that you personally didn't need as the free side dish that somebody else did need or really wanted. And remember, all the information you're getting is free. However, let me give you a little bit of tip. If you're in a time crunch like I always am, and you want that information and you want to just get through it quickly, you can either A, skip through, or B, you can actually play the videos on a higher speed. And if you are one of those, at least if you're on YouTube, I don't know if that feature is available on Rumble yet, I'm guessing not. And in the reverse, if you're one of those that complains because I talk too fast, then you can simply play the video at a slower speed. I personally don't like doing either of those for my time crunch. If I want to listen to something, I play that while I'm doing other projects such, such as cutting up apples and zucchini to put on my dehydrator, folding laundry, and more. I can just listen, and it's not using up any more of my time to do that. So anyway, moving on from there, some of the other topics I wanted to cover was, uh, let's talk about the zucchini. So I did cover this last year, and what this is, I finally figured out just by observing the plant closely. This came from initially a zucchini i planted from seed i bought that was for black beauty zucchini which is one of my favorites to grow because it just puts out so much fruit grows quickly it bushes out beautifully and then i saved the seed from one of the bigger ones planted it the next year and then got a couple of plants that gave me zucchini like this now you can see the color is just a little different it's not as dark in fact here's a picture of the last four black beauty zucchini I just harvested when I thought my plants were all done. I go out there and there's four more good sized ones. Anyway, that's how it should look. And initially I thought this was maybe a hybrid of the Italian striata zucchini that I was also growing, but it still didn't make sense. And the only reason I thought that was because if you look closely, you can kind of see stripes. But then as I watched the plant mature and really paid attention to the plant and to the zucchini itself, I realized for certain what it was is actually cross pollination between the pie pumpkins I was growing and the black booty zucchini. And the reason I'm certain of that is because this little one here, they almost never look like this, but this is also one. The only reason this one looks like this is because it came from a small plant that never fully matured. So this was the best zucchini it could put out. But you can see this is already fully orange, like a pumpkin. In fact, if you were to see this, you would just think it was a, a kind of oblong, weird shaped pumpkin. And this will turn orange like that too, when I let it sit. 
The other things are, first of all, that this stayed, other than that weird one there, all of my zucchini from that plant that I got last year and the one I planted from that same seed again this year, they were all about the same size and same shape. Fatter than a regular zucchini, but also shorter than the Black Beauty. And the, the flavor and the, um, I think I have some pictures I took last year. The flesh just has a more uh, deeper yellow color, not so white like a regular zucchini, even when you cut it fresh while it's still green on the outside. But also the plant, instead of growing like a bush, it vines. And it, it doesn't get as heavy amount of fruit on it the, the same way my pie pumpkins do. But for flavor, as a zucchini, I like this best. Now this one I'm gonna let go ahead and turn orange and then I'm gonna save the seeds from this and then I'm just gonna serve this up like a regular squash like you would with spaghetti squash or um, acorn squash or anything like that. I'll just cook it and mash it. So that's my plan to do with this. And then what you see here is just some of the last of the remaining zucchini, those four that I got. I gave one to my daughter-in-law the other three I cut up and dehydrated. So I have quite a few quart jars of dehydrated zucchini that I use in all kinds of different things. It's my favorite way to preserve. I also do like to powder it up and add it to different kinds of breads, pancakes, and more uh, just to get more nutrition. But anyway, so there's that. And then yes, my apples. I actually currently have from this year alone 14 quart jars of apples. I have another dehydrator full going right now and I might get another dehydrator full. And what I found is with the Kasori, it holds the six trays and they're a little bit smaller than the larger size Kasori that is out there now. So when I pack my trays full, I find that three trays fills up one quart jar. And that's approximately seven to nine apples depending on the size. So I'll have 16 quart jars for sure when I get done with what's in there. And I might still dehydrate more because we just keep bringing in more and more baskets full of apples. And I've been giving some to my daughters-in-law. I've been giving some to my friend. I mean, I just have so many apples that I'm, I'm trying to put up as many as I can. And uh, anyway, I'm gonna be doing a video on the many uses for dried apples here soon. But because I'm, I think right now I'm at four weeks ahead because during harvest season and so much going on, I, I wasn't able to put out as many videos then. So I'm down to being only four weeks ahead, which I actually prefer. Six weeks is just a bit too much. And so it'll probably be about a month when that video comes up. So yes, dehydrating apples to me is just an excellent way. It's, it's the best. I actually like it better than canning them. I didn't like the way apples turned out when I canned them, but uh, dehydrating them is my favorite way to do that. I do also freeze some up uh, just for a little quicker, you know, when I want to make some kind of crisp or pie. I actually get it all ready for pie. So it has everything in it, the sugar, the flour, the cinnamon, nutmeg, cloves, and even the rhubarb powder. And I, fr I freeze them in reusable one gallon bags. And then when I'm ready to make a pie, I can just dump that out. But for now, I just keep making pies out of the fresh apple since I still have a ton coming in. So uh, anyway, yeah, this saves so much room. So you think that just in the one jar, there's around eight apples, all in one quart jar. And, uh, and that's still with a lot of airspace in there. So if you were to powder this up, uh, some apples powder up better than others. It depends on their sugar content. Then, you know, powdering it up would probably fill it to here. So you can save even more space. And that apple powder has a lot of use as well. So then another thing I wanted to touch on is last week I was talking about the uh, honey infused garlic and adding the horseradish powder that, you know, horseradish from my garden. Love it so much. This is another, yet a third jar I've got going. And two questions people keep asking me is how do I store it? Well, while I've got it, you know, kind of fermenting and infusing, I usually leave it on the counter for a minimum of three days, usually a week and really let everything infuse well. And that also reminds me to just shake it every so often. I want you to hear that. So even with that honey in there, it starts out, even though this is a, a runnier honey, it's the one I got from, the orange blossom honey I got from Azure Standard. Uh, and it's raw, that's important, raw honey. Um, it is runnier than some of the thicker honey I usually get, like the black raw blackberry honey tends to be thicker. 
But anyway, so that's a good one for this. But as it sits and infuses, some of the liquid from the, the water inside the garlic will also get into the honey. That will lower the viscosity and make it easier to mix. So I also have nutmeg, ginger, cloves, and cinnamon in there. This is my favorite blend so far that I've done like this. So really good for helping to prevent and cure colds and flus. Uh, and with the horseradish, obviously, it's going to help clear the sinuses if you're plugged up. So anyway... Technically, because of the honey, you should be able to, especially if it's fermented, you should be able to store it anywhere you want and it wouldn't spoil because honey does not spoil. But I like to keep mine in the fridge, partly because I just prefer to eat it cold. So once I'm done letting it infuse, I just started this one yesterday, so it's going to stay out here for several more days. Then um, I do like to store it in the fridge and, and just consume it cold that way. Then the other question I get is people ask me, well, once all the garlic's gone, can I just reuse that honey and start some more? Well, I always wonder, why is there honey left? <laughs> um, it always surprises me that people would pick the garlic out and just eat the garlic. When I'm consuming this, and by the way, you can cut up your garlic, mash it, whatever you want to do, but it will infuse well, especially if you freeze your garlic ahead of time like I did. Um, I eat it with a spoon. So I'll get my spoon in there. So I'm making sure I'm getting all the good spices. If I've added, especially if I've added black seed, I'll do that sometimes too. And make sure I'm getting everything. The horseradish, the cinnamon, all those spices. Oh yeah, and the cayenne pepper I put in here. And about two or three cloves of garlic. And then I'll eat the spoonful. So I'm getting the honey and everything as well. So I, I everything's getting consumed evenly. So when I'm done, there's nothing left in the jar. So I start afresh. So anyway, that, I mean, you consume it however you want, whatever way you prefer. But a lot of the goodness is also in that honey. So you got to remember is the, the honey is getting into the garlic, but the garlic is also getting into the honey. So it is along with all those great spices and whatever else it is you're adding to it. So eat the whole thing, I say. That's just my personal. That's what I do. Again, you do what you think is best for you. And yes, you can re you should be able to reuse that honey just fine if that's what you want to do. Another thing I wanted to cover, actually I wanted to do this right away too, is uh, some of you saw my video last Wednesday about the book giveaway. And I did specifically say that the drawing would not happen until this week. So I plan on doing the drawing on Wednesday and then shooting a short. So it'll either publish this Wednesday or Thursday, depending on how quickly I can get all that together because I do have a grandbaby on Wednesdays and it's a little busier in that way. So I might not even be able to shoot it and then and publish it until Thursday. So that's what I'm going to do to make the announcements of who the winners are. There'll be five winners. I won't be telling you in a reply to your comment. I won't be telling you to text me. I won't be giving out my phone number. I never, ever, ever work that way. I never give out my phone number. I never would ask you to text me. I do not have WhatsApp or Telegram. I don't use those. So if you're getting messages from people, because I think there was like three different accounts. I don't know if it was the same person setting up three different accounts with my profile. One even used my whole channel name. Or if it's the same person, but it's all a scam. Never reply to those. Report those kind when you see them, especially if they put a phone number. That's not me. I will never do that. So it makes me really mad that somebody got a lot of people's hopes up thinking they had won. But as noted in that video, it was I was allowing a whole week for more people to be able to enter into the contest. So it, it wouldn't make sense for me to, to say that and then just go, oh, you won, you won, you won. That's not how it works. So I'm sorry that happened to you. It makes me really mad that somebody's messing with people's minds that way. And then making more work for me to go try to find them and delete their comments and reply to all the emails I got from people thinking they had won. Some people just like to mess with people and some people are actually uh, fishing for your um, financial information. Well, if I'm doing a book giveaway, why would I be asking for your financial information? So just a good clue. If you ever see that, it doesn't matter if this is rain country, at Rain Country Homestead. I don't know how they got away with doing that. Or in my same profile picture, if any of those things fall in there and it doesn't follow the rules of the video, that's not me. 
So report those people when that happens. And thank you for the people who did that because when I went back and realized what was going on and tried to find that person and block them, I couldn't find any of the comments. So that tells me that people were that know better jumped right on that, reported them, and they were gone. So anyway, be watching probably more like Thursday. I'll do the drawing on Wednesday. It'll be at least Thursday when I announce the winners and then again in next Monday's this and that video. So that way if you miss one, you'll get it in the other. And then at that point, um, once I do that and I give your name publicly in the video and I'll be doing your username because I won't know what your real name is if you're if your username here on YouTube is not the same, then you'll email me at raincountryhomestead at gmail.com and give me your address then. Do not put your address publicly on YouTube. I will never ask you to do that either. <laughs> so yeah, I'm trying to keep everybody safe here. And then the other thing I forgot to say in that video last Wednesday is that the same day over on Rumble, I published a video that is only on Rumble. And what it is, it's a non-YouTube this and that. Oh, I'm going to try to do a, a video that's unique to Rumble at least once a month. Um, if I can, if I can squeeze it in, because it is more time, more work for me to do that. So I got to free up more time in order to try to squeeze that in there. And uh, I suggest you go watch that video. And please subscribe to me on Rumble if you're not already, because you'll be seeing more and more videos that are unique to Rumble because they can't, I can't put them here on YouTube. But one of the things, I'm going to go ahead and bring this up and be careful about what I say. But one of the things I wanted to also say is that in that video, I was talking about Vicks VapoRub and the ingredients and how there's at least one of the ingredients I'm not allowed to talk about on YouTube, but is still used in Vicks. However, one thing I forgot to point out in that video is that if you have a jar of Vicks, you're not going to see it listed on the jar. What I was trying to point out about the fact that whenever they move another one of the active ingredients like the thyme oil and the nutmeg oil and they move that to inactive ingredients what that means is they only list it on the box but they don't list it on the jar so even though those are actually the original active ingredients if they label it as an inactive ingredient they don't have to list it on the jar but they still have to have it listed somewhere well what do most people do they buy a box of vix they take it out of the jar, they throw the box away. And by the way, those same ingredients can be found in mentholatum and in even in the Equate brand. I know because I looked this up. Same ingredients, uh, the same things, the, the, even the taboo one. And I wanted to point that out because if you pull out your jar of VIX and you've already thrown the box away, you're going to look at your jar and you're not going to find the list of inactive ingredients that include those. But like I said, I bought a brand new jar with the box because I wanted to be able to see for myself that that's still in there. One thing I didn't note though until somebody pointed it out about VIX is there's one ingredient that is synthetic and that is the camphor. I don't know how I missed that. And that is still listed in active ingredients. So I am redeveloping my VapoRub recipe using all the ingredients they use just um you know including the cedar leaf the nutmeg oil and the uh the thyme oil the taboo subject and the camphor because i have natural camphor oil that i get from i get all my oils from now foods i've been using them for as long as i've been using essential oils and i absolutely believe in them and uh, i've shared this before but the reason why they're less expensive than other brands is partly because they've been around longer they have a much bigger factory they can buy things in bulk that other companies can't do and so they get a better price everything is quality controlled and and highly tested so i trust now and their goal is to keep the prices on their essential oils down as low as they can so people can actually afford them so anyway yeah so making your own VIX, whether it be you use uh, petroleum jelly if you don't have a problem with a petroleum product, or you use, like I did, I used a, I think a, I use a blend of uh, beeswax and coconut oil, uh, whatever it is you use as your base to, to add the essential oils in. But I, I'm having to play with amounts, so having the jar of VIX and then comparing the two as I add the different amounts is how I'm able to get the, figure out how much I need in there. It's actually quite strong. There's actually quite a bit added to it to get it equal. And then one more question I wanted to cover is, um, 
the carrots. Whoops, I didn't bring my jar of carrots out. But last week I was talking, uh, I had that video come out about growing and putting up carrots and I was talking about dehydrating them. And they, though I said it quite clearly in there that I did not blanch the carrots, I dehydrated them raw, some people were still confused and I think it was because I went on to talk about boiling the carrots. Well, what I meant, just to clarify, is that when I go to cook them and to prepare them for eating, whether it be as a side dish or adding to a roast or whatever, if I'm adding it to a roast, I just throw it in there with a roast. And the same thing with any other dried ingredients, just throw it all in there because the juices from the roast are going to cook the carrots. But if you're cooking them as a side dish, yes, you'd want to boil them for about 10 to 15 minutes to get them tender. So that's what I was talking about. I You can blanch your carrots if you want, I prefer not to. I just cut them up. I love the way it holds the flavor. It's, And I haven't had any issues with it holding the color, at least so far, because I did those rainbow carrots several years ago that I purchased some organic rainbow carrots, and I know I had them for at least a year, some of them, and they held their color just fine in storage. I know part of the holding the color is going to depend on how you're storing them. If you're storing them in glass jars, but they're and they're getting lots of light exposure. I store every pretty much everything in glass jars anyway. But if they're getting exposed to a lot of light, that will fade the color. That will happen with your canned goods as well. Or even your freeze-dried foods or anything you put up. If it's getting a lot of light exposure, it doesn't matter if it's natural light or your incandescent light or your LEDs or your fluorescence, it's still gonna fade the color. So I think that was everything I was going to talk about today and I hope you enjoyed my this and that for the week and don't forget any videos I'm going to link to like the I'll link to the carrot video and anything else I'll be putting in the description box down below so don't forget to click on the word more or show more somewhere down here right below the video screen to open that up so you can see all the links and other information I'm putting in there and thanks for watching take care and God bless.